Hi there, Facebook. Hi there, Instagram. I think we are now on both. Um, if you are on live, please give me a quick thumbs up or something to let me know that you can actually hear me. Because sometimes, unless I'm plugged in, it doesn't actually work. But I'm just going to um, get stuck in and talk about the topic that I promised you for today, which is a uh, popular one when it comes to self-esteem, behavioral eating, eating psychology, and all that um, area of health and well-being, basically. And that is metabolism. Because so many, so what is metabolism, first of all? So basically, metabolism, metabolism is the energy your, um, it's basically your energy, okay? Your food is broken down to be used as energy, and the rate at which this is done, that is basically your metabolism, okay? And whatever you don't use as energy is basically stored as fat, okay? And, you know, so many um, people say to me, well, I've got a slow metabolism. It's not my fault. That's how um, I was born. There's nothing I can do about it. Hi, Nick, Uncle Nick. <laughs> um and, and then other people say, well, I'm lucky, I've got a fast metabolism. And really, when we look at it this way, it seems like either you have it or you don't, basically, and there's nothing that you can do about it. And yet, that's, that is wrong. That is not how metabolism works, okay? And so really, your metabolism is affected by so many different things. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Vicky. Um, you know, lifestyle elements. So basically, your uh, health foundation, which is something that I'll talk about a little bit later on, but also your sleep, your stress levels, you know, your sleep, for example, when you're tired but wired. Um, you're really tired but you can't fall asleep at the end of the day. And um, this affects your metabolism. And your stress, for example, there is something called rushing women syndrome, which was a term coined by a um, nutritionist. You're having breakfast, otherwise you'd be live. <laughs> okay, Nick, I let you off the hook. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so your your health foundation, your sleep, your stress levels, and your weight. Now, you know, I'll just give you a snapshot of what we're going to talk about today because stress, we all know, can help you put on weight when you're stressed, whether you're overeating or whatever it is. Somehow, for a lot of people, some people lose weight, of course, when they're stressed. Um, you put on weight. Now, the same goes logically that if we can put on weight when we're stressed, then relaxation, when we're relaxed and um, peaceful, then we can lose weight. Okay, and this is the area of eating psychology that I am going to talk about um, more today. Because really, this is something that I find so interesting when it comes to the whole conversation around nutrition and health and well being. And really, the eating psychology angle on metabolism. And let me know, by the way, on um, on Instagram if you can hear me. I know on Facebook you can. Um, and so really eating psychology covers um, metabolism. So, for example, things like pleasure, things like rhythm, things like um, awareness, intuition, uh, mindful eating, relaxation, okay? All of these things and also your your story, the stories you tell yourself, who you are when you sit down at the table. And um, and really, this is what it comes down to, because your metabolism, as I said, it's affected by certain lifestyle factors, but it's also affected by who you be. And this, of course, we can change. Of course, we can change lifestyle factors as well. But today, I'm going to talk about the emotional side of how we can turn on our metabolism and become friends with it so that it works better for you, okay? So that you don't feel that you're constantly struggling against it. Now, I want to be clear here. In my work with eating psychology, it is not about um, losing weight. It's not about how much you weigh, how big or small you are, or whether you have weight to lose. This is something that affects every single one of us, okay? Because all of us have a relationship with ourselves, with our food, Okay, with our body, with our self-esteem, all of these things. And so this is why this is a conversation that is for absolutely everybody. Okay, not just you if you think that you need to lose weight or anything like that. <clears throat> and so 
the main point here that I'm going to talk about with the elements of eating psychology is that to, to have your metabolism work for you in the best optimal way, you need to be switching off your cortisol, your fight or flight response. Because when you are in fight or flight, your body cannot, your digestive fire shuts down. Okay, your body cannot think about running away from something um, that is dangerous and at the same time taking its time to digest your food um, and making sure you break it down and assimilate it. Okay, that is not the priority when you're in a dangerous situation. Now, like I've said on so many of my um, videos before and in my posts, what many of us don't realize is that every day, so modern day, everyday living puts us in a, so often in a, a position of fight or flight, okay, of stress response. So whether it's because you have a long to-do list or whether it's because you're about to go somewhere and, oh my gosh, it started raining and now you're in a panic about how you're going to get there, you know, in the pouring rain and, you know, I don't know if you're carrying things or taking your kid to school, whatever it may be, okay, or you've read an email um, or you forgot to do something or even if you're planning a holiday and it's stressing you out because you don't have time to book your hotel and the car and whatever it may be. Okay, all of these still put your body in the fight or flight response. Now, you want to get your body into the rest and relaxation response because it is from that space that your met metabolic, so your digestive fire, your, me your metabolism um, can switch on again. Okay, so when your digestive fire is on because your body's relaxed, your nervous system's relaxed, it's not struggling um, for survival basically, then you can digest properly. When you digest properly, your nervous system is relaxed. This kickstarts your metabolism, okay? Your metabolism can function in this state. Now, one thing that, we, um, that is important here, when we look at the topics that I said around eating psychology, so the um, awareness, um, you know, pleasure, relaxation, all of these things, and, and mindful eating, who you are when you sit down to eat, is because there is a state of digestion, the first state called cephalic, okay, um, state of digestion, cephalic phase. And this is when, for example, you walk past a bakery and you smell it and you're like, oh my gosh, that smells so good, I wish I could eat a croissant or a piece of brownie or whatever it may be. And then you start, you know, having all of your, your inner dialogue around it that, oh no, I shouldn't and I'm going to put on weight and I ate something like that yesterday, I shouldn't have it today. You know, and then all these thoughts can basically go around your mind and all of that, um, that worry, that guilt, that judgment around it. And then let's say you sit there pondering, you're looking, you're, you're smelling it, you're looking in the window and it looks so good. And you say, okay, you know what? I deserve it. I'm going to go in and I'm going to have a piece. So when you first smelt, you know, you walk past the bakery, you were smelling it, you were, your body was then starting the cephalic phase of digestion. So your, um, your mouth waters, okay? And what this is, is it's, it's releasing the digestive enzymes that are gonna help break down the food in your mouth, which obviously is the first stage of digestion. You're chewing it and your enzymes mix with it to help break it down, okay? So when your salivary glands start to, you kickstart them basically already with the smell and with your eyes. So it's with your nose and your eyes that you actually start eating. So when something looks really appetizing and it smells delicious, you're already, already signaling your body um, to start the digestive process. Some of you might remember from school the story of Pavlov's dogs where he rang a bell and the dogs would start salivating. So he'd ring a bell before a meal to teach the dogs that when they heard the bell, it was time for their meal. And the dogs would start salivating even before they could smell or see or anything, you know, any food because they had already associated the bell with uh, food and eating. Now, um, what was I talking about? So the cephalic stage, yes. And so once you go into the bakery and then, so you feel good about it, the smells and everything, and oh, I'd love one of those. The minute you start thinking guilty thoughts or judgment around it, you're starting to shut down your digestive system, okay? So by the time you've gone into the bakery um, and you're feeling a bit guilty, but you still got a little bit of pleasure there as well, and then you, um, you normally gobble it down because you, then by that stage you're feeling guilty. You know, the first mouthful 
is always going to be the best mouthful. You know, that when you've had that first bite, none of the other bites after that are going to be as good as that first bite. And so really, once you've had that first bite, and um, maybe you start eating your food quicker than you should and kind of stuffing it down um, because you feel guilty about it. Okay, so by then, um, all of these stages, your mental process, first of all, starts to shut down your digestion and starts to put you in a, in a, um, in a state of awareness. And I mean, I don't mean awareness as in mindfulness, I mean awareness as in, oh, be careful, there's something going on here because you've got negative judgment around it, okay? And then when you stuff it down, it means that you're not chewing it slowly and properly because digestion, of course, yes, begins mechanically in the mouth. You have to chew your food into small enough pieces that it can then be broken up and used in your intestines. When we wolf food down and we don't break it down enough, then it, it means it's a lot of work. Your intestines, your digest, digestive tract, basically needs to break it down for you, okay? Anything that you didn't chew. And so, um, <clears throat> yes, and so basically then you're not digesting properly. What that means, it's not because you have a slow metabolism, it's because you didn't mechanically chew your food um, as it should be chewed, and emotionally, you um, switched your body into a state of emergency, of fight or flight. And so the digestive enzymes didn't get released as they're supposed to, to help break your food down. Okay? And this sent your body around the message that there was an emergency, so maybe some cortisol, um, you know, insulin, and all of this. So all of this affects your metabolism. Okay? Your metabolism isn't just a a thing that you switch on and off. It's, it's a whole series of processes. And so the more aware we can become, the more we can look at our stories around food and who we are and foods that are good or bad um, or judgment around it, um, the more we can be relaxed when we eat so that your body is in a state of rest and relaxation rather than fight or flight, the more you can take pleasure in your food, okay, the pleasure, um, <clears throat> when you take pleasure in your food, this triggers the, the reward center in your brain. And so what does that do when your reward center is being, um, is being triggered? Your body is relaxed, okay? Because when you're in a state of emergency or fight or flight, your body's not getting the reward signals because you're not relaxed. When you are taking pleasure in something, your body is getting all of those signals that you are safe, that you are, that life is good, that you can be calm and relaxed and peaceful. Again, this will help to optimize your metabolism. Okay, so we can really see here how it's about who we are being. So, where do essential oils come into this? And I've just realized I don't have any of them here. They're all in my box in the kitchen. Um, uh, I'll just go and get them. Hang on one second. <laughs> okay, here we go. I just think it's much nicer for you to see it with the actual bottles. So, the um, certain essential oils can help to coax the toxins out of fat cells because basically your fat cells, what they are, is they are pockets of um, fat which basically holds toxins in it, okay? So that it can keep them away from your organs to keep you alive. So when you've got all of these toxins floating around your body and your body is not, <clears throat> excuse me, working well enough to get them out of the body, your body will create fat cells. Hi Zoe, um, hi Siri, hi Claire, Anka. Your body will create fat cells to, to hold those toxins, okay, so that it keeps them away from your major organs so that you can survive, basically, okay? Um, and so, certain essential oils can help to coax the toxins out of your fat cells. Other oils can basically help your body to, to release them. And, of course, you need adequate hydration to help flush it out of the body. This is why, and that's a whole other topic that I talk about a lot, this is why your digestion, your gut health is super important for absolutely everything. Now, um, and so, and certain oils as well can help to, or can, yeah, can contribute to supporting uh, insulin response, cravings, um, the feeling of fullness, satiety, 
and all of that. So, for example, if you look at an oil, okay, <laughs> it's written in Danish, sorry, Muscat Salvia is basically Clary Sage. Okay, now Clary Sage is one of the oils that helps your body, uh, or your nervous system, to switch to the parasympathetic nervous system. That is when your body is in a state of rest and relaxation. Okay, so literally, it's lovely. I wish you guys could smell it. Sorry, I know it's a bit unfair. So literally, I'm smelling this oil. The scents, the, the particles, the scent particles are going up the olfactory nerve straight to the limbic part of the brain. Um, now, 90 to 95% of your behavior is subconscious, okay, and your thoughts. It's automatic behavior. And your limbic system is where you house your memory. I don't know what side it's on. I'm doing this, but it's where you house your memory, your emotions, and your automatic responses. So when I smell this, it's automatically going to my brain and sending my brain the message that it can relax, okay, that there's no emergency, that it can switch from the sympathetic nervous response, which is the one that basically takes over to keep you alive in an emergency, helps your eye, you know, your pupils dilate, your heart rate to go faster, uh, your blood pumping to your limbs, your digestion shuts down, shuts down or slows down. Um, and instead it helps your body, it supports your body in coming back into that parasympathetic nervous response. It, um, which means, so that's your nervous system. And of course your body works together, so your nervous system will also affect your hormonal system. So it also helps your, um, your hormonal system to come to, um, to rest, basically. So that your body can stop getting the message to release cortisol, insulin, um, and all of that, okay? And instead, be releasing the hormones for harm, pleasure, relaxation, serotonin, for example. And so you can sniff, um, you can sniff <laughs> Clary Calm, for example. And then there are blends like Peace, which is a blend of various different oils. Now, you may be thinking, okay, well, you know, I want you to talk about metabolism. How is this? Remember, everything I've basically been speaking about is that when I'm smelling this oil and it sends my brain the message to that everything, that I'm safe, basically, that I can, I can calm down, I can be, you know, enjoy pleasure and life and just take it easy, that is switching on my metabolism, okay? It's switching on my digestive fire. So when your digestive fire, when your digestion is working optimally, this means that your body is breaking down the food that you've given it or old food that you ate in a stress, you know, this morning when you were rushing to get to work on time, it can break down the food so that your body can assimilate it. That means you use it, absorb what it needs, and then process and get rid of what it doesn't need. Okay, and of course, this is why you do need to drink to help flush all of that out and also make sure that you have um, good bowel movements. But that's a whole other topic. Lisa, Clary Sage is a bomb for relaxation, relaxing, balancing hormones and activating the third eye. A fam transformer. Lovely. Yes, it is a very um, feminine oil and a great one for us to use. Um, and then there's oils like, for example, Copaiba, Copaiba, which help to soothe the nervous system. Okay, so you can even smell it. You could put, do not do this with oils you have at home, please. Okay, these are 100% um, pure um, and, you know, tested on many different levels for purity. So you can literally put a drop. Tastes a little bit woody, this one. Um, you can put a drop under your tongue, okay? And so it helps to soothe the metabol the sorry, the nervous system, which helps to, of course, raise or speed up your metabolism. Again, because your nervous system is relaxed. Um, and it's also anti-inflammatory, okay? When you have inflammation in the body, um, this is also a sort of a state of repair or emergency for your body, which means that it cannot be um, in a relaxa full relaxation state. When you reduce inflammation in the body, then your metabolism can also go up. Now, one that many people who use oils find useful for metabolism, and yes, if weight is something that is a focus for you, it does not be mean that you need to have a lot of weight to use. It can be if you're just trying to maintain your weight or anything like that, or you just want to help your body to cleanse on a daily basis and maintain weight. For example, this can support you in that. So I'll just show um, 
Instagram. I haven't been showing you. Smart and Sassy. Here we go. Otherwise known as Slim and Sassy. Now, this is a blend that has different oils in it. So it has grapefruit in it. Grapefruit is known to help <clears throat> to help flush um, the fat from the body. It's known to be, it, it helps with, well, first of all, it helps with uh, cravings, okay? Helps with cravings or hunger. And I was always told in France growing up that uh, grapefruit helps to, what was it? Yeah, it flushes fat from the body. That's just what they say in France. Anyway, look, what I'm doing, I'm going to put three drops. Normally, with the other oils, I'll just put one drop in my water. But this one, if you're using it for a specific sort of therapeutic effect, then you want to use um, more drops. If you haven't got your oils and you want to know more about that, send me a private message and I can explain how you would take it. Um, I'm not going to go into that now. But basically, cheers. And I sip on that throughout the day. So grapefruit. It also has peppermint in it. Now, peppermint helps with that feeling of fullness. Okay. So you can literally even have a bottle of peppermint and just smell it, you know, um, halfway through your meal or at the beginning of your meal. It's not going to stop you eating what you need to eat to survive, okay? It's not just going to stop you eating altogether, but it's going to help increase that feeling of fullness with your meal. It also has cinnamon um, and ginger in it. Now, cinnamon and ginger are known uh, herbs to help support your metabolism. Okay, now remember, well, you might not know, um, oils are 40 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. Okay, so one drop of peppermint oil is like 28 cups of peppermint tea. Okay, so when you're having, uh, when you're taking cinnamon and ginger in this format, obviously it's going to be a lot stronger. So it helps to, um, to support metabolism. Cinnamon is amazing for sugar cravings, or rather to prevent sugar cravings. So if you are someone who really craves sugar, you want to be using cinnamon. If you have the powder form, sprinkle it over any kind of food you can think of. Um, and obviously you can have it in the oil form as well. I'll add, for example, not this one, but the neat cinnamon, I'll add into porridge, for example, or into a smoothie. Or if you eat yeah, yogurt, then you can put a drop in that. And it also has lemon in this. Now, lemon is one of those oils. So grapefruit can help to release or support the body in releasing toxins. And the lemon supports your body in cleansing. So um, whereas the grapefruit may help, may support your body, I've got to be compliant here, in releasing toxins from the cells, for the cells to basically pop open um, and, and dump it, then lemon will help the body to, to bring that out of your body, okay? So it doesn't sort of hang around in your, in your bloodstream and to, to come out. Um, and so I really want to remind you at this stage that it's not just about weight, about losing weight, maintaining weight. It's for your metabolism. It's not just um, if you are overweight or if you think you're overweight, you have weight to lose. Metabolism is something really that benefits all of us because it's all about who you be when you sit down to eat. Okay. Now, even if you are someone who is um, very, very slim, if you sit at a meal and you wolf your food down and you're not aware, you're still not treating your body um, in the way that it needs to to make the most of that nutrition that you're giving it. Okay, so you might still have some nutritional de defi deficiencies or anything like that, which of course can affect mood, um, fertility, sleep, and all sorts of other things. Okay, and so really, it's about who we are when we sit down to look at um, to, to switch off that um, that cortisol. Just reading here, uh, Lisa. Great message, Caroline, that the essential oils can support digesting not only what you eat in the moment as well as what you ate before when stressed, and that the parasympathetic nervous system being key. Exactly, yes. So though the oils themselves might not help, you know, physically digest it, though some of them do, obviously, if you're using um, the blend called Zen Jest, for example, that helps your body, has the oils in there, <clears throat> the herbs that are famous for helping with the digestion, like fennel and um, peppermint, things like that. It's because it's switching your nervous system into the relaxation state, in which case it can start the process of digestion, whether it's food now or, you know, things that have been stuck there from before. And so one, how are you going to use these oils? You know, I'm telling you, yes, you know, the smart and sassy, you can put it in your water and you can sniff these. What I would say, um, recommend is that you, before a meal, Take a moment, and especially, you know, those of you who have toddlers, for example, or busy lives, it can be really difficult to, to have that awareness. 
And you will be pleased to hear <clears throat> that it only takes five deep breaths to bring your body from a state from the sympathetic nervous system, uh, nervous response, to the parasympathetic. Okay, it just takes five breaths. So what I would recommend you do, if this is something that you are working on, you know, whether it's um, increasing your metabolism, for example, or it's mindful eating, intuitive eating, awareness, whatever it may be, just sit there with your favorite oil. And take five deep breaths. So it can be even that you do this, that you just take one drop in your hands throw them together and take five deep breaths like this you can even take this a step further and um, put your so you cup your hands together like this and you have your thumbs and basically this spot here is one of the acupressure points to help relax the body and you can put your hands on your desk and just take some deep breaths okay and then I would recommend actually just putting the oil down here for that. So it's easier to, to smell. Um, <clears throat> yes, and that will encourage you to basically to eat slower, to be present. Um, and so your body will know to switch on the digestive fire um, for you. Um, let's see. Yes, and also, yeah, that's another topic we can go to another time. Um, so yes, so before you go and blame your metabolism next time <laughs> for not being on your side or not being your friend, know that there is a lot that you can do to manage your metabolism, okay, and to make it your friend and to make it work optimally for you. And again, um, you know, if you're someone who gets tired, you're low on energy, you want your metabolism to work properly for you, because remember I said right in the beginning, your metabolism is um, how your body makes and uses energy, basically. It breaks down the food for energy. If you're not breaking down your food properly, again, nothing to do with weight, if you're not breaking down your food properly, you're not gonna have the energy that your body needs to do whatever it is that you want to do in life, okay? To have the day that you want to have, to be the uh, mum you wanna be, to be the partner you wanna be, the friend, the employee, and just the person you wanna be, basically, okay? So metabolism is key for all of that and for making sure that your energy levels are um, optimal, optimized. So I hope that was useful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you've had an aha uh, moment or if this sort of, you know, struck a chord with you or if you've had experiences with this before, you know, slowing down, you've noticed that perhaps when you're relaxed that maybe it is easier for you to lose weight and you do have more energy. And in the periods when you're stressed in your life, perhaps you are more tired and you have a tendency to put on weight. So whatever it is, or any questions that you have on this, pop it in the comments below. And um, yes, I shall see you on our next Facebook Live. So I'll just say goodbye over here on Instagram first. Here we go. And then bye-bye Facebook as well. <laughs> see you.